give you guys some tips and tricks on best practices when searching in Splunk. Without further ado, let's get into it. So disclaimer right off the bat, I'm going to be searching in all time here, and this is definitely not a best practice when searching in Splunk. This tells Splunk to retrieve the data all the way back to when it first got ingested up to the present moment. And if you're in a big if you're in a big environment, this could really bring things to a screeching halt really fast. So it's best practice to specify what index you would like Splunk to go look into. And also the time range picker plays a big factor as well. You want to, if you're looking for maybe say failed login attempts and it happened at a particular time period, you want to go and let Splunk know that. So that way Splunk only retrieves data from that time frame. So if it happened in the last 15 minutes, let's just search Splunk for the last 15 minutes and retrieve that data. And you should have your answer um, with that data that Splunk retrieves back there. So right here, we're going to go ahead and run this search here. So index equals main, letting Splunk know that we want to, we want to search the main index for the data that we're interested in. And I want to show you just how long this one takes, even if you do specify just one index, right? So we go into the job inspector and hit the inspect job here. And we can see that this search job took 15 seconds to run. And this is just searching just one index. And you can see that Splunk brought back over 280, possibly 300 fields associated with this, with this index. That's quite a bit of data. So what you want to do is help Splunk get even granular about what data you're actually searching for. And this can be accomplished maybe by a particular host, say maybe it's a Windows machine, or a source type, maybe it's a particular source of data that's coming in, or excuse me, source, or maybe a source type. And here we're going to be telling Splunk what, sor what source type we're actually interested in. And we're going to see how much faster Splunk is able to retrieve all the data associated with that one source type that lies within the main index here. And another thing I want to bring to your attention is Splunk's search modes. So Splunk comes out of the box with three search modes. You have your fast mode, smart mode, and verbose mode. And by fast mode, this is obviously the fastest of the three, retrieving your events with Lightning fast speed, but this one you sacrifice some completeness with this mode, so kind of use it, use it, you know, sparingly. Smart mode is that happy medium between fast and verbose, so it does give you some completeness while also giving you, or at least it's faster than verbose mode. And then verbose mode is the thorough check of all the data, very complete, and it also brings back statistics and events if you're running a transforming command with your SPL. And I can show you that guys and I can show you show you guys that later as well to give you an example of that. But back to this example here. So now we specified the source type, the index and the source type associated with the data that we're looking for. So you can see that Splunk has now brought back 130,000 events versus the near you know 300,000 events. And we've cut it now down to 10 seconds. So really good compared to the 15 seconds that we were we were currently facing here. All right. So this is this is the beginning of how you want to start building your search, your searching skills here. Now, one thing I want to make you guys aware of that Splunk does allow wildcards. And this is something that you also want to use sparingly as well. Only use this when you absolutely have to, because right here, this search criteria is telling Splunk to search all of my indexes. And again, if you're in a large environment, this can take a very, very long time to complete. And it's something that you want to avoid at all costs, okay? Especially in a production environment. Now, another thing that I hit on was the amount of fields that came back, right? So the 
search with just the index equals main brought back roughly 300 or so fields. Now we speci specified the source type and, we've, and we only see nine more fields associated with the interesting fields here, okay? So one thing that we can do to help Splunk out is, again, get even um, granular here by letting Splunk know what fields we're actually interested in. So we're going to do the pipe fields command. And let's say we're only interested in the action field down here, right down here. And let's choose the, the J session ID as well. So we're going to do these two fields right here. And look, Splunk only brought back data that was associated with these two fields. And if we go into the job inspector and look at this job, it only took three seconds to run versus the 10 seconds. So again, getting granular about what we're actually looking for in the Splunk environment. Okay, so right now I wanna show you guys what a transforming command looks like and the search modes as well. So if we added in the stats count by action. <laughs> okay. So like I mentioned, if you ran this in verbose mode with the transforming command here, you're going to be able to see your statistics on this tab. And you can go ahead and switch back to the events as well and look through here. If you run a transforming command in the fast mode, you're just going to see, in this particular case, since we have a transforming command in there now, your statistics. You're not going to be able to access your events. And we switch to smart mode, same thing here. You're going to have to switch to verbose mode in order to see both of these. Okay. I just want to show you guys that. And here is another technique to use when searching your data in Splunk here. I'm going to show you this table right here. So I threw this through the J session ID field into a table. So as you can see, we have a table, 20 pages, right, per, per page here, or 20 rows per page here. And there's a lot of these, right? Now, if you're only interested in, let's say, the top 20 here, we run this command, and Splunk has a lot better time retrieving just this small amount of data right here. So this data set, instead of the numerous other um, values, those field values with this with this table right here. So again, to sum this all up, be specific, know what data you're looking for, and also be cognizant of your time range picker when it comes to your searching. All right, that takes care of this video for today, everyone. I appreciate everyone's time, everyone joining here. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care.